Something. Which things? Oh, I know. Oh. And then I know I have my computer, and then I have scales. Okay. And uh, how did your work on the etude go this week? It went okay. It's still a little iffy. I did the. Is it less iffy than last time? It's less iffy. Okay, that's uh, that's an improvement. That's uh, that's good. Now we said that we will focus on the second movement here, and uh, you no, know, before we do that, how about you warm up with scales? Oh. Okay. So go ahead and tune. Let's My check your A. Is it stain? Just is it more no. consistent now? Is your mom coming today or? I think she's coming at this point. Okay, so uh, we will be done at 1.30 because there is a lesson at 1.30, which is an hour and 20 minutes from now. Okay. Okay? All right. So, um, do we need to let her know? Maybe. Okay. <laughs> okay I'll text her quickly. Um, Yes. Now, let me hear your, your scales. Um, you're doing acceleration, right? On yes. which one are you doing that? The B flat major. I okay. did the mixed acceleration. Do you like that one? It's very... It confused me at first, but I got to... You got it. Yeah. Good. So let's so hear that. Do all the, like, the slur and then the separate and then the mixed? Because that's how the math's. Oh, um, let's let's do just the mix. But before you do that, can you tie your shoes because I'm afraid you're falling? <laughs> Are you getting yes. fall about it for you? I'm not gonna fall. Not well, gonna fall. I don't want you tripping. We kind of rushed out of the house, so we didn't have time to tie. Oh, see. Okay. Oh, as long as they're not trailing around and there's no danger of you stepping on them and tripping or something, it's good. Okay. So much more people. So uh, let's do the mixed ones. Oh. Okay. <laughs> And I don't think it's it's you making them uh, sound that way. I think you just don't have enough rosin. Okay. So. Ah, Ooh. Ooh. You just chipped a bunch of rosin and it fell right on top of your violin. So, um, do you remember what to do with your fingers? So, put them around the, the, the right fingers, the oh, right hand fingers. That. Your right hand fingers. No, 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 no. no. Just oh. one you can't oh. do But here. Put them around here so the, the uh, silver doesn't doesn't uh, chip. That, that makes yeah, a lot more yeah. Sense. And now, uh, which part of the cake are you going to use? Okay, you're right. Yeah. It fell off of the clock for some reason. And then yeah, uh, but uh, doesn't it get sticky to your fingertips? Is if you do that? No. Do you still have the cloth? Somewhere. Well, uh, you need the cloth because. Uh, Rosen sticks. That's that's what it does. Oh, that's kind of good for me. I don't think. Yeah. Okay, and you have the same one as I do, yeah. so it's, it's okay for us to, to mix the rosins mm -hmm. here. Now, mine has been dropped, oh. but if you go in here, mm. 
Is this the only time during the week that you talk to your parents about asking? <laughs> I don't think that's yeah, right. Yeah. Well, you have to be a little bit frozen on, on the bow, uh, probably every time. Uh, do you have a dream class video? Uh, that's I mean, much it's oh, no, 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 no. We cannot use that. Yeah. I need to find my cloth at some point. I have okay. a cloth. And now your violin is beginning to get sticky again. Okay. Yeah. Well, but uh, with so much rosin uh, and, uh, you know, if, if your hands tend to perspire a lot, it just will get a bit stickier, quicker than for some other people. Um, I know it's the size is a little bit too small for you right now. And you will be getting a different violin, but you, you need to not get in the habit of keeping your equipment in, in really good condition. You know, to me, it's such a turn off to, to pick up a, a dusty violin full of frozen and sticky and all that, and to have to play. Um, here, here's your ball. Oh my god, it's over there. Yeah, because I took it. Okay, so now let's play. Just uh, with very easy, yeah, short motions. Do you, do you see how easy it is to, to taste those? So as you're playing your detache, that's what you need to do. Obviously, you have to uh, adjust which way you're tracing them depending on uh, on which string you're you're working. But so here, so let's let's try that and see how that works. Very very springy fingers. Which one is? 
Let me die in the back of the fridge for you. Can I get tea? No, 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 hold it, hold it there. It's good, good, I'm glad. So. Is that the right angle? Oh, yeah. Okay. It's higher now. Oops. No, it's better. Ah, it's better. Okay. I'm glad. I'm glad it's. Yeah. So. Right. That's it. So when you play as fast as you can, do you still feel yakata taka 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 taka? You should. You should. So. So. Okay. So. So. You have to know when it starts because as as you've been working the. Acceleration. Um, your body knows when you you do the uh, subdivisions in three. Yakata takata takata takata. When uh, when the shift and the bow change happen together. So just do you understand what I'm telling you? Yeah. So you have to know when exactly the separates begin and then you have to feel the yakata takata 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 So it might be in a, in a very fast speed, it might not have to be that fast, depending on how fast your fingers can go. Okay. Now, can we try 24 to pull? Well, oh, that's the last one. Uh, yeah. So, oh. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's a, that's a whole lot better. Now it it still can be cleaned up. Uh, shall we try one more time? How about we do it? Yeah. <laughs> Right where the pattern, uh, the bowing pattern changes. So, can we do just the descents? So, yes, that's what you need to feel. Wait, the, uh, the shifting is a little bit late. So, you need to anticipate, the, yes, the fourth finger a little bit better. Yes. Now let's put it together. So play the slur and then let's put a gap right before you start so you have time to regroup. Your acceleration with with this now arpeggios. Have you done arpeggios in B flat? No. Ooh. Um, I learned the arpeggios. Uh, but the, you have, have done arpeggios in three octaves, right? I have, but I've done like way different things. 
Yes, the fingerings are different. Okay, now look, uh, we will start with uh, with the fingerings. Where is the the cheat sheet for the fingerings? Uh, the, uh, the pages are written out somewhere here. So okay, so this is the cheat sheet for the fingerings, and uh, here is the the written out set for this. So now look, the ones that start on the second finger on the G string, like C, D. The, the, the D fingerings here, uh, D flat, so B flat, B, C, D flat, and D. Those are all second finger arpeggios on, on, on the G string. They have exactly the same fingering. So if you learn one, if you learn one, uh, you've, you've learned all of them. So uh, how about, um, let's, since you're doing the, the B flat scale, let's do the B flat set fingerings. So they they start here on, on this page. So. Hey, this might be the same one to Sort of, oh, I, I can play that. Oh, and then you start tripping. Choose a tempo in which you can do it. Now, uh, if nine to a bow is too fast, let's do three to a bow. Okay, now, um, with the arpeggios, unlike the scales, we're always going to play three beats. Since we're doing three octaves, it, it makes the, the divisions much, much easier that way. So, uh, this is a good start. And so on. So, let's do that. Right, so now can you do that just so you feel the, 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 the building blocks of this? Right. And now slide without stopping, but as slow as you can. When, when it's time to play the D flat, just stop there, but feel feel the movement, feel uh, and hear the slide at the same time. Uh. Right there, and, and uh, go down, because we always practice shifts going up and down. Right, right. So uh, this is going to be our arrival place. Don't try to measure it from the third position and reaching back because that's what you're... Uh, so... So... Uh, you really have to feel... The, the, the right arrival. Good. Okay. And now... At the, at the top of the violin, do you really need to be doing this? Bring the number, yeah. Yes, and now here you need to open up this space. You know, I had the bizarrest experience this week. So uh, somebody uh, from Dallas asked me for, for a Zoom lesson. And uh, I worked with them. And uh, so uh, they were doing the... Oklahoma Allstate thing, and uh, there's uh, the Candide Overture, and uh, there are places where, they, you know, you need very rudimentary extensions. 
and the, uh, she was just shifting back and forth. Like they were just getting cross-eyed, you know, looking at it just because, oh my goodness, this, this was just so unnecessary. And, the, and the, I asked her, okay, so why don't we just use standard facial fingerings there with, with just a little bit of extension? Oh, um, I don't do extensions. Uh, <laughs> Because apparently, um, her mom, who is also a violin teacher, um, got injured doing extensions. Uh, they don't teach extensions, they don't do extensions with this. And she was so adamant about this that I kind of, you know, I dropped the subject. I, I did not want to, to go into that. But, the, you know, we, um, we stretch big time. Right, the violin. So for this particular one, can I have your hand for a moment here? Mm -hmm. Left hand, yeah. So you really have to feel the space right here opening up, okay? Just so, uh, because in, in general, we, we do want to keep the spaces between the fingers widened, but here for, for this one, you really, it's, it's almost as if, you know, all the way from down here, it, needs to open up so so we can reach there with these and it's not that big of a distance because you know so this is the distance between three and four right just one whole step down here now if i transfer the same distance up here it is the same distance right we're, we're measuring that with the harmonic here actually that's that's how much smaller the fingerboard gets you fit four fingers a perfect fourth in, in, in the same distance that in first position fit that much so uh, yes there is going to be a, an extension but it's not going to be that extreme you still have to feel the opening of this okay so do i start from the beginning <laughs> yes let's let's start one more time <laughs> But I think you can manage it. Da, da, da. Always have nice uh, feel for uh, just flowing through the music. Come down to first position. Do you see on what octave you have to land? It's the B flat octave. So that's 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 the tonic of, of what uh, what you're playing. Of course, it will be filled up with uh, different type of inversions after we do the major and the minor erasure, right? But uh, that's that's your beacon there. That that octave. So let's let's go on. Ta da da. A second uh, first inversion. <laughs> something to this and this is how I want you to practice because it will help you um, improve your vibrato so uh, when you practice this slow always keep at least two fingers down and vibrate them so so by keeping fingers down for one thing uh, your hand will want to keep the fingertips close to the fingerboard Right? And then uh, vibrating more than one finger is much harder than vibrating one finger at a time, isn't it? So uh, don't push down and squeeze, but just keep the hand nice and loose. And uh, did you do your wrist hand vibrato exercises from last time? Yeah, so it, it should be no problem then. So just we'll just. There's another 
another thing that we need to consider. Three and four, those guys, they don't want to vibrate as much as one and two, usually. Yeah. Yeah. So when you vibrate on the first and uh, on the second and the first, uh, feel the vibrato pulse. So it's, if it's going, then if if you have a note with the third and the fourth finger, go go into the next subdivision quicker. In order to make them work harder and, and get as agile as first and second. Okay. So. Yeah, keep keep two fingers on the fingerboard the whole time. Okay, so in other words, you need to keep your second. Yeah. So at the, the last moment, then prepare the next finger. So we will uh, do just one octave at a time, yes. Let's put a little bit more. Yeah. So uh, let's put a little bit of. Um, uh, yes. Yeah. And if you lose the finger, the feel for it. You can always go back to that. Yeah. Because that way we'll hear more, more of the pulse in, in the vibrato if the hand is involved. Okay, so um, now uh, technically we can move to accelerating the arpeggios, but the, I want you to work on your vibrato because we will use, uh, we need a lot of that for the brook because it's a tone piece. Um, so for for next uh, until next time I see you, I, I want you to just work on this, and you can also do that on the slow note values when you do your scales. So for example, if uh, if you want to kind of start the acceleration from the very beginning, which is 
single note to a bow, not four to a bow. We, we were a little bit cutting corners there. I didn't want to bore you uh, too much, but uh, if you're doing B flat, so it will be. <laughs> Try to have uh, more than one finger down uh, on this because uh, your hand needs to get strong enough that it can, uh, if, you, if you can play from beginning to end, like one note to a bow with vibrato in three octaves, you will have the stamina to, to, to play through the, through the bruch with uh, vibrating every note. So you want to develop that stamina. Now, I don't want you though to be going only with, with the arm vibrato there. I really want you to, to start using the, the hand vibrato. So before you do the scale, do those preliminary exercises that I showed you uh, last time, and and then just try to get that because it's so much easier. Go like this. You will be very tired. You won't have any energy left to do anything else. So we need to add hand vibrato for that. All right, got it. Yeah. Okay. Now let's uh, go over to the bruch second movement now. Straight to it. Hmm? Straight to it. Straight to it, yes. And uh, now, let me get my coffee out. Just, I just want to make sure that things match. And for <laughs> the other pages look too confusing. <laughs> yeah, very different situations. It's not a good thing. So, uh, do you start counting, uh, do you start feeling the pulse of the music before you put the bow on the string or you put the bow and then you, you remember, oh, I have to count? It has to happen ahead of time because your preparatory motion, your, uh, you know, pretty much everything, even the vibrato pulse in which you play, it's going to be in the tempo in which you have to play. And uh, the very first sound you make is this magical moment where, you know, the ears of everybody gets good to you. And you don't want to lose that opportunity. Because if it's bad, then, then the ears start wandering around. You, you, you want to instantly... So... So, right away. To be there, so I need the inner preparation. spots on your bow and can I borrow your instrument and see is it because you have to play with very slow bow that you're having a hard time with your right hand. So you don't want it to get on your left hand fingers because then everything oh. on the fingerboard gets yeah. really sticky. Yeah, so we, we missed a little bit here. In, and it just happens if your bow hasn't been rosened in, in a long time, 
uh, it just gets completely unresponsive on, uh, on this. Now, yes. um, the thing is that if you do studio recording work, like you, uh, you play in, in an orchestra and um, uh, you're under the microphones the whole time and the microphones are right next to you. You don't want to have any of the surface noise that the, the rosin makes. So that's, uh, that's a special condition where you don't have the rosin with your bow almost at all, maybe once a month. Um, but the, the thing is that you don't do that, right? Right now we're uh, developing your, your tone, your ability to project and all that. So you need to put rosin. I put a little bit of rosin on my bow every day before. I, it, it, it just ends up being the, the, the right amount. Now, have we talked about how exactly to rosin the bow? No? Okay, so I already, I already told you one of the, the little tricks. So, uh, because you don't want to, to chip uh, the cake. And then the other thing is you rosin the bow in piano. Do you know why? Because you need really tiny dust particles to, to get into, into this. Because for, for a violin playing, that's, those are the ones that make the difference. Um, and uh, if we get into the physics of this, they, uh, every time you draw the bow across the string, you know, there's a lot of friction that happens. And the friction usually, usually results in heat. So those tiny, tiny little things, they liquefy and then instantly freeze the game. Yes, so that's, that's how we are able to, uh, to, to play, but you want those tiny, tiny particles there. That's why if you rosin your bow in piano, it will be very sticky and very smooth. And that's what we want. Now, let me let me borrow your instrument again. Keep this nearby. So, so let's so So there are no black spots on it. It's very smooth. You can put the, the rosin there. I think we finally put enough. In the bowl for, for, for right now, we might yeah. need to rosin it again in, in 20 minutes. So, um, so, uh, so. Uh, so the sound needs to keep. The G string, what do you need to do so, so it doesn't get blank like that? Yeah, you have to lean into the string a little bit more. So, so here on the G string, you don't need to be squeezing the bow at all. Actually, if I come near you, I have to be able to grab the bow out of your hand. Yeah, right? So you don't squeeze. Now, uh, here. Do you know where on the fingerboard that note is? How would you try to figure it out? 
Oh, it's, it's easy. So figure it right now. Oh, okay. Uh, yes. So uh, you, you uh, okay, if, if you miss it, don't just dismiss it. Analyze by how much you missed it. So, and adjust the hand in the next time around. Go to that base spot. And by the way, you practiced while you were listening to me because you were holding there, just keeping that shape. You you practiced. That's practicing. Yay! Yeah, I can do yes, nothing. Yes, 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 exactly. <laughs> Except that it's not doing nothing. You're holding the shape there, and right now, um, just uh, just so you're fully cognizant of what you're doing. Uh, take a mental snapshot of how much your thumb is around. Yeah, that's yes, all of those things. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Part of my thumb from the top, the yes. And now, uh, let's see if we can slip into that. Context of the piece that's on an up bow, and now do you know why that is better than doing it on a down bow? Because if, if the shift is on a down bow, both hands have to bow. I just and it's much easier when they, they, they move in opposite directions. Yes, and now Ella, I've got one more thing. showing you two things. One is with the bow, that is, it, is with the vibrato. What am I showing you? Yeah. Now, is this a faster bow or a slower bow compared to this? Oh, you're going to not only that, I'm really slowing down my bow, so I have plenty of bow left for the crescendo. Because um, you were going with the same bow speed. Oops. So, um, slow down the bow. Crescendo. So how are we? So uh, first of all, can we practice? So hold uh, four beats for this because that's uh, how how many counts we we need to have on the bow. Uh, so distribute the bow one, two, three, four. Right? So there's more bow uh, as you crescendo. And now with the vibrato, you have to match the thing. And now, Ella, doing it with the whole arm is going to be very hard for me. So I want you to loosen up here from the bass joint. And let's, let's see if we can add a little bit more on the hands. Just this thing in it. So that will help us tremendously with it. The, the intensifying of the breath. Yeah. Yes. Now, as it gets uh, uh, faster, don't, don't go into a spasm with this. Just, just stay loose. Okay. Good. Now, can can we think? Uh, keep, keep, keep doing it more from here. Now I'm. I'm ah. Yes. And now give it a little bit. Of, Um, 
sorry, it's, it's just very drying yeah. here. I'm, I'm not sick or anything. Uh, it's uh, so. And now let's try the same thing on the first finger and let's do it again with the down bow. So. Don't start with such intense vibrato, so it, it has to be present instantly, start uh, swinging and then increase, yes. Yeah, now look, if you're going with just, it's slow and bulky and yes, so, ah, yes, and now, so instant vibrato, here, That's fine, okay. Now, can I hear you play? So, instant vibrato. If you have just basses. Shall we try sustaining much more to here? So just so maybe there's musically speaking there will be but you you, you make a, such a huge diminuendo on that and it's it's not there he didn't put that we have to sustain the sound okay. So let's let's do that one more time. Now here. So get yourself in good time to the to the frog, so you don't have any bow left over to have to do that. Because since your down bow is going to be at a slow bow speed. In the previous one, the up bow is the faster bow speed. You need to anticipate the new bow speed from the old bow. So the end of the up bow needs to slow down and be in the speed of the down bow. Make sense? Yeah. Because we have to make it sing. We have to make the violin sing. string 
here. So because it, we're in fourth. So very noble, a very full, beautiful tone in this. shaping so uh, oh you don't have that in your in your music you, you, you have these accents and in my uh, in my music it's like a uh, uh, long diminuendos here but you know um, an accent is actually a very short diminuendo so uh, lean into this so more on this then Let's treat them like that. So now the problem here is going to be... So far so good, right? Because uh, the, the bow makes a natural diminuendo as we go toward the chip. So... Um, now, so at the chip again... You, uh, we, we have to do exactly the same nuance. Do, do you think you can manage that? Maybe. Good. Long line here. Long, 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 long line. So deep sounding. So really feel feel the full vibration. How how fuzzy can you make it? Can can you look at the vibration pattern on the string and make it really wide with the ball? Yes. Uh, so those are the bowings, yeah, right? Uh, so on that up bow that you uh, suddenly have to start uh, saving. Uh, so make sure that you're close to the bridge and really deep into the string and uh, then the vibrato we have to put a lot of yes yes now can we put all of these elements together yeah yes let's do it. This is a 30 second, this is a 16th. Now, do you understand what I'm driving at? I played on my dress. Yes, <laughs> this, is, this is way too quick. So, um, one and two. So, this is, this is, uh, yeah. yeah, you were double dodging. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, Let's do just one more time because it's it's a good primer for for the uh, rest of, of this. Since so much of it is uh, you know singing through the violin, I'm still not getting enough of uh, this uh, singing vibrato on, on what you're doing. It, uh, it feels, feels yes. Enough. Didn't say crescendo now. Right there. Yeah. Uh, so now just. Oh, 
serious and now so so love that the descending six it's so beautiful sound than you are uh, with my heavier bow and my longer string and all that so and the, you know traditionally people actually start the, start the um, the trill here not from above but from the note below like oh. like on this one So I can guide you a little bit into that poco ritardando because it, it really needs to relax into that cadence. Do you know that word cadence? Probably hear me play uh, say that word a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what it is? Yeah. Okay. Now uh, there um, loosely it can be applied uh, as uh, something like uh, you know chord progressions, like if you play. Uh, <laughs> cadence because you, you know it, it, it's uh, you have dominant and tonic at the end you got uh, that the tonic uh, with, with the resolution at the end now sometimes um, phrases can end in inconclusive way when when they end on the on the dominant with, uh, with uh, you know something that obviously needs to continue afterwards but basically they're places of punctuation in music um, I'll point out different cadences as, as we move uh, through this but it's it's uh, in uh, if you're speaking those are places where where you would either need a comma or a period okay at the end of a piece you might need an exclamation mark right but um, 
Now, uh, in what key are they here? Do you know? Um, third, fifth, sixth, no, no. Did you say A flat or E flat? It's not E flat. It's D flat. Okay. Wait, no. Wait, D. Wait, no. What? Okay. I, I now, used to know my flats really, okay. really well. Which Which major key has three flats in it? Because this is tonal music. This is not 20th century music. It's not a tonal. It's it's uh, it's tonal. Oh, so, A flat. Uh, a flat has four flats. Oh, so the E flat. Right, so oh. E flat major has three flats, and what it's a uh, relative minor? Uh, C, C minor. minor. Now, it's either E flat major or C minor. It cannot be anything else. So, which one is it? Um, and and Brooke is very tricky with that, you know, because he, he doesn't, he doesn't do, start on like an E flat. It, it doesn't start on the tonic. But now, uh, and now the trick also is that G belongs both to the E flat major triant and to the C minor triant, right? Is the third of the E flat major? Uh, it's is the fifth of a C minor triant. Now, if you're in a minor key, you're likely to have B naturals. If you're in C minor, you're likely to have B natural or A natural. And if you're in E flat major, uh, chances until modulating are you know lines and lines after that. So where is your first accidental in this? And I'm not talking about the grace notes. I'm talking about. Um, uh, okay, well, this is like a passing note. Now uh, look at the end of, of the first full phrase. What note do we come down to? Yes, that's the key of, of our piece here. And this is a moment of cadence because we finally reach our tonic. So this is a moment of big arrival. Yeah. Now, uh, this means that we start the piece on the third of the scale degree. Third scale degree, right? Now, do you know of other pieces that start on the, the third? Because it's a very different feeling. So, oh. <laughs> It, it, once you put it in the context of the key, it's, it's an entirely different feel, isn't it? Now, there's a very famous one that starts on the third, it's in D major. So, um, it has like the same feel as the same. Yes, uh, yes. It's a very special compositional thing, and you, you, you kind of have to feel that. So, um, so we start in third, but then we we bring it very clearly to E flat major here in this, and then uh, it's it's funny to to have D major in our ears and then go to to the to the E flat. Now let's talk about the feel of that second phrase. So we're in in E flat. Uh, Do, do you see how this fits into into the scale and all of that? So, on which scale did you do we start this particular? Um, okay. Yes. Uh, um, now, uh, by the way, I thought of another piece that that is very special and also starts on the on the third. Of, uh, uh, so. Do you know this one? Spring Sonata. Mm. Mm. I forget how it started, but I know some of the pieces. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I think it, it will be a good piece for you to play soon. Yeah, Spring Sonata will be a yeah. great piece for you, for you to work. I think I played before uh, this was uh, Cinderella. Was uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, now, can can we start with the, with this here? And uh, you know, at this point, uh, we 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 move upwards in in the scale of. Uh, and and uh, there's much more 
malleable movement in the orchestra, right? They, they, they start to just over the bass uh, there. Uh, while the, the, the very opening is very static. So uh, with, with the way you play this bit, I want to feel that, that breeze coming in. Okay, and uh, then we've got the here. So this, uh, that is a, they don't have to be so uh, in earnest, you know. Uh, so, so can you play the music and just love it and enjoy it? in three young pop two three one so don't don't rush those uh, in other words our so just just bow is twice faster than than the than, than, than this part of the bar right so so it needs to be light so we don't get a false accent on it uh, and, uh, Let's see if we can also treat the dotted rhythm uh, in a kinder way. Because just, this whole thing is just so precious and so beautiful and you forgot. That's, that's uh, too military for this. Uh. Are you warm enough to be able to vibrate? Please, next time, bring, it, bring, bring something warm. Because uh, no, 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 no. Yeah, and then save your bow. Uh, so you have to slow down your bow. Too much because when you vibrate, and all of this is, is, is getting in the way. Yeah, so, so keep, yeah. Can you connect more? Can you connect more? Uh, yeah, uh, do you see that the, the original slit is really long here? So even though you're changing your bow. Even though you're shifting, you have to create the idea that it's it's the same uh, the same line. And now, do you hear how this plays? Are you okay? Yeah. It's just this bone is so like stuck out, so it makes it really. Like, oh, your bone is perfect there. So it's, no, it's it just nothing. feels like it sticks out a lot like that. Well, um, yeah, uh, don't push forward with your shoulders because if, if you push forward, forward, it makes it stick out. It's perfect as it is. You really have to sustain through this. Do you, do you see that he has added this ornament here? It's, it's not really an ornament, but just a just dynamic thing. So you have to sustain. Don't, don't do the opposite of what he's asking you. Uh, uh. Yeah. Hey girl, I'm hearing from you. Can, can we not take such a huge breath there? <coughs> Yeah. 
save yourself from a ball for just one. First finger a long time to come back to the string. This is also first finger, so you have to lift the first fingers to make the A, but then you're really late coming in for this one. Yum, Not so beautiful. Just one there. Just a it's a tritone. Tritone? Wait, no. Is it? Oh. It's a minor seven, so. So it's a huge leap in, in terms of melodic writing, just, just as big as it gets, pretty much. Uh, Luxuriating it. Uh, and uh, see if you can get some vibrato on the fourth finger as well. Yeah, you can just slide a little bit to it. That's right. Now let's go on. I'm glad you remembered that because I've forgotten already what I did for you all. Don't yeah. take that, but I know what it means. Um. Yeah, that's So uh, just, just a phrase in the division right there. So uh, we go. Because the, the fourth in the new phrase really begins right here. Now, 
need to sustain a little bit more uh, going through this. So uh, let's start uh, here on, on this uh, long B part here. Uh, The one place uh, it's it's right here. You didn't hold long enough. This, so I'm just going to circle that as a, a reminder. Uh, now, uh, when we get here, uh, so so starting from here. Can, can you think one continuous crescendo one to here? So uh, there should be no place where you you let the sound disappear on that. Can we can we start right here on, on that F? Yeah. Yes. So you, you really have to save them, right? So yeah, and you're absolutely right to get really close to the throne. Then uh, can you can you really slow down your bow and play really into the right? Such a good thrill, so one, two, three. So you, you just have to have the inner discipline to two, three. On this, it says pesante. So let's think of them uh, more as tenuto max. So it's going to be a nice, beautiful uh, detache. Uh, but um, we need to hear it, uh, crescendo on the drill. Keep the sound going. Now, why in the world do you think he has six notes to a bow? Four notes to bow, two separate, and all of them are the same value. What what is he doing for the bow? I think he's increasing the intensity. Six to bow, four to bow, separate. So uh, in a sense, it's it's like written out crescendo. And, and then finally it bursts out in a trill, and that trill cracks open right on the when when we reach that letter G there. So can we try all the way from uh, so So it's it's a big, a very climactic moment there. last note of a slur and you're kind of gulping it rather than pronouncing it. Now, uh, when you do the till, uh, don't make an accent with the bow because I hear, don't, uh, so you need to count uh, two, three, but definitely don't change in a beat and don't do it with an accent. Two, three. Pesante mean, you know? Mm. Pesante, heavy. So if it's heavy, it can't speed up that much. Do you see heavy people run fast? No. <laughs> okay, so, so, uh... So uh, you really need to uh, indulge yourself a little bit more. And here on this C, uh, we need 
that is a springboard for for this scale that leads all the way to the B flat here. We can't start that scale without having the springboard. So can we start right on the pesante? Do you understand what uh, what happens? So you have da 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 da. Uh, in how many parts do you need to divide your bow for this? How many notes do you have? Four. Four. Uh, and the grace note, which takes very little that. Now we we need to emphasize a little bit this one. So for that last count, we we need to save a little bit more bow. So um, the, the 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 first three notes will take. Just a little bit more than half a bow, and then the, the last one needs more bow. Come in! Come in! Hello! Hello. Hi there! I'll be with you in just a couple of minutes. Okay, okay. may I run grab something from my car? Yes! It's just right down yes. there. Yes! Okay, okay. So, let's start one more time here. Yes. I, I moved in a way that uh, I'm, I'm so sorry. Yeah, that, that was so great, Ella. That was <laughs> sorry. I'm so sorry. It's I'm fine. so sorry. I'm so oh, sorry. It's fine. Are you okay? Yeah. Everything is okay. Yeah. Okay. Now it was great. Oh my goodness, those were the best uh, three measures of play today. Uh, oh. Now let's let's go on. Let's go on. <laughs> Let's make a really oh. big diminuendo for that. Uh... Uh, much more diminuendo. Uh, because we want to have just enormous build up from, from a piano. Yeah, and here on this. Uh... Really, really sustain as much as you can and play. Do you have the next page? Have no. you worked on the next page? I haven't yet. Okay, it's okay. Can we, can we work on these? No. Okay, so now for next I, time. I'm sort of like the. Oh, you're better. You're a better violinist to be uh, playing them like this. Now, yeah. uh, do you know how many counts this six tablet here occupies? Three, three, three counts. Two. So, no. Sorry. So, how many counts per measure do we have? Oh, three. Right. So three, one, it's one count. So yum, takata takata tam, pa pam, yakata takata tam. And now because it's it's tied over, da kata takata tam, da kata takata ta, ta da kata ta 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 ta. So that's that. And it's it's not that difficult at all. Now, did you get um? Did you make uh, uh, pictures of of my part? So you, you, you can transfer the markings because it will make life much easier for you um, as, as you go through the, through the next page. Do you have a phone? No. You don't. Okay, so uh, I'm going to then make pictures of, of, of these, uh, of, the, of the next few pages. Yeah, uh, you, you should start packing because the next lesson is here and as much as I wish we can continue, uh, playing together right now, we, we oh. have to stop. My legs! <laughs> oh, what's what's wrong with your legs? Nothing. They could not have gone to sleep, can they? No. Okay. Now, Ella, a fun exercise for you might be to try to identify the main keys of, of this. Oh. Piece because uh, it doesn't stay in one key, you know. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to send uh, all of this to your mom. Okay. 
Okay, so she should have them. Uh, and your next lesson, I think, is scheduled. So uh, make sure that you um, read correctly the next the next page of this. Let me see in your edition how far does it go. Um, do, do you have the second page out here in, in your folder? No. No, I have the text though. Oh, so you need to add that to this. So yes. um, now the counting is going to get a little bit uh, challenging in this. So uh, do you see how I put slashes on the main beats, on the main counts yeah. in this? Go so I, I want you to do the same thing because look, here okay. we will have six tablets. Oh. Here. Uh, oh, so be yes. one, two, three. Yes. Yes. And now when uh, yeah, when we get to this bit here, six oh. tablets, just a regular 30 seconds here. So yakata takata taka 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 taka. So be be aware of how all of this goes. Okay. And then this will feel very familiar. Yes. And uh once we get to this bit, now for this one I want you to identify the key because it will make life so much easier to know in what key you are playing. Okay. Okay. All right. Great. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, to yeah. keep track of the numbers. 63 and 103. That's the things I need to do. Okay. <laughs>